Welcome to a special edition of Medicine in Meadville. I'm Dwayne Kohler, and as you can tell, we're not at the hospital today. We are out on Route 18, north of Conneaut Lake, in an area that's known as the Lauderdale Estates. And I'm standing on a bridge that's uh, part of Route 18, crossing over one of the canals on the north end of Conneaut Lake. You may have heard about this, but we're going to learn some more details today. Um, there's a group that's putting together a handicap access ramp for those who would like to canoe and kayak. And I would never really thought about that before. How do you get into your canoe or your kayak if you're in a wheelchair? So we're going to talk about all the details of that. Um, and there's a whole lot involved. And I'm curious to learn more about that. But I think you'll, uh, I think you'll enjoy the show today. Um, we're going to have a tip, a health tip to you for also as the show goes along. So stay with us. I think it's going to be a very interesting show. So joining us now is Dan Thomas. Dan, we've been talking back and forth by email, and, and uh, now we're getting to be on in person here. So, yes, sir. Uh, it's great to meet you. And nice to meet you. I, I, I'm really fascinated about this project. So tell me, but you know, give me the give me the, the overview of the whole thing here. Okay, uh, we were our group was formed in uh, June of uh, 2013 with uh, some some neighbors and myself, and uh, we had the idea of improving our canal and uh, offering a. Uh, an additional recreational resource for the community. So we had had recognized that there's no uh, kayak and canoe access uh, for the, the region and people presently have to, to uh, launch their boats at, at the public boat launch amongst much larger boats. Big power boats. Yes sir. Which can be a little intimidating if you're Absolutely. in your kayak I'm sure. Yes sir. Okay. So we, we found a, a beautiful launch online called uh, the Easy Launch and it's handicap accessible and it res is restrictive to just kayaks and canoes. Larger boats won't be able to use it. So people will have a nice uh, off lake facility using the, the, the uh, one and a half to two miles of existing waterways where they can uh, enjoy their, their uh, uh, kayaks and canoes with their families without having to worry about fast moving larger boats. So you give me about seven things I want to ask you about here all okay. at once. Well, I'll just go one at okay. a time. Okay. So we're just a short ways from the main part of the lake on one of the canals. It's the north end of Conneaut Lake here. Yes, sir. Um, and, and we can see behind us the bridge that crosses where Route 18 crosses over one of the canals here. That's correct. And as I'm looking, as I'm looking off, off to my right here, um, the canal's kind of, uh, it's got a lot of grasses and weeds and growing up now. Yes. Am I going to be able to get my canoe or my kayak through that? So is, is this going to be something I'm going to be able to, I mean, y y I can't tell if there's if there's bottom real close by or, or if I got a little bit of water I'm gonna float on that's definitely an issue and there will definitely have to be some dredging okay. uh, our plans are our, our hope is to dredge an area out by the abutment to, at the lot for for the in-water launch and then we'll start with a channel through the center of the canal for the kayaks and canoes which we hope to expand over time we also hope to hope to clear up other areas of the canal which requ require um, maintenance. These canals were created in 1959 and nothing's been done since. So they've gotten wider and shallower over time. So it's, I, I could probably float in there now in, in a canoe or kayak because I only need, you know, what, six or eight inches of water to float on. Um, but I'm going to be in some weeds for at least part, at least part of it now. I, I would say you, you, you most likely would be now. Okay. Uh, especially with the water being low as it is. So the, the the part about this that really fascinates me is okay. I really hadn't thought about this. If I'm disabled in a wheelchair or whatever, how do I get into my canoe or kayak? I mean, you know, yes. kind of talk me through that. How, how would I do that? I, I okay. don't know how this how this, this launching project uh, how that would work. Okay. Well. Uh, Easy Launch has a uh, in-water launch with a, uh, a bench that somebody can wheel their chair up to. They can slide onto the bench and they can then uh, slide into the kayak. And then there's a ramp, uh, launch with two ramps and rollers with handrails. So somebody could ah, kind of uh, okay. ease themselves okay. in and pull themselves out. They, uh, they will need help getting the kayak to the launch itself. So off your rack or your vehicle or whatever, you're still going to need some help to get it into the, into the launching yes, system. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then there's help to get you into the launching system from your chair or from your walker Ab or how, whatever that arrangement would be to get you in. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Okay. And, and folks can visit our website, uh, www.clwta.org and they can see pictures uh, of the uh, prospective launch and, and uh, we also provide other information on there. 
So the so the site behind us is it, well, it's it looks kind of overgrown and That's you right. know a lot of weeds and things and so yes. on. You're you're thinking of developing that into like a parking area and a, a, with yes. a, I guess it would be a, you know a, some sort of an improved path to get down to the launch site. So you're you thinking right. of a person in a wheelchair, yes, but sir. it wouldn't have to be for disabled people only. Others others could use it also. Oh uh, yes, absolutely. Any anybody with a kayak and canoe could easily use the launch. Yes, sir. And. Uh, what, what we had in mind was a, uh, a uh, parking area, a staging area possibly with a pavilion, a, some sort of seawall, and then a ramp to the, to the actual in-water launch. So I like, I like kayaking myself. I've been a big fan of that. When I was in Boy Scouts, we did canoeing. You know, I had all the, all the training you go through for your different merit badges and things for canoeing and sure. so on. Um, it, it seems like there are some areas around Kanye Lake that would be kind of fun for that. Talk about that for a second, if you would. Okay, well, there's a... Uh, uh, probably a mile and a half to two miles of existing waterways which have uh, very little to no larger boat traffic so people can uh, uh, have a nice peaceful uh, afternoon uh, it also help uh, people interested in fishing they can reach a lot of spots where a larger boat could not I know when I was back in the day, when I was in Boy Scouts, I think I was about 13 or 14, a friend and I, we were, we were on a, a rubber raft and we paddled up into the golf course, up, up through one of the yes, one sir. of the waterways that I think that we're talking about. Yes, sir. And uh, I remember someone losing their golf ball. We just happened to see where it went and fished it out. <laughs> they were very, they were excited to get their golf ball back because we just happened to see it splash right over there. We fished it out and tossed it back to them. So There's uh, lots of places around the lake to explore, <laughs> certainly. So the, the, the process, uh, where are you in the process? And you know, what kind of help do you need? And you know, uh, how far okay. along are you? Well, we've been in it for two years now and we've had a great deal of help. Uh, we've asked for our municipalities support and asked them to partner with us. Or, uh, Summit Township has been very receptive. Uh, the Secretary uh, Cindy McCoy has gone uh, way, way more than we, we could have asked. She's attended a grant writing seminar for, for, uh, in Franklin. She uh, helped re rewrite our grant uh, uh, Township Supervisor Bill Agnew has met with the DCNR with us, so we couldn't have asked for any more for them. And most importantly, they've agreed to to uh, take ownership of the facility okay. if it's created. So at the end of the day, then that that would be a township park, I guess. Yes, sir. This is Summit. Yes. This is Summit Township where yes, we're sir. here at the north part, at the North Part of Lake. Okay, that's correct. Well, thanks to Summit Township, I guess, for for all that uh, yes. all that help and guidance and so yes. on. The dredging part, what's involved that? I mean, is, does a big machine come in? Does it have to be floating? Does it have to be on the land and then it, it uh, has an arm that reaches out? Or how, how does that work? That's, we've had uh, numerous uh, preliminary bids and there are a number of methods. Uh, there is a method with a dredge, an actual uh, in-water suction hose to s suck out the muck and pump it uh, to the bank. There's a, an actual wand, like a sweeper, they get in there and pump into a water permeable bag on the bank that, and then haul that away once it's dried to a smaller volume. I would think that, I would think that soil would come out of there would be pretty fertile. I would think that'd be something that could be uh, pretty popular in even somebody's lawn or a farming operation or whatever. It's very high in or organic material, so it's uh, very good soil, a little smelly. Uh, but one of the issues is it has to be tested uh, by, uh, DEP before it's okay. hauled away, and that's where the bags come in because it's it's much cheaper to move the smaller volume okay. after after it's okay. dried. There's also uh, a method with the actual backhoe on a barge uh, coming coming down the lake and uh, digging the, the uh, material up and putting it on, on a separate barge. That'd be more expensive and more time consuming, but uh, it may be needed. Now I've had several friends who talk about going fishing from their kayak and I mean, is that, would that be part of what we're talking about? Now I, I assume with all the weeds, the little fish can hide from the bigger fish, so the big fish are hanging around because they know the little fish are hiding in there, that's that sort of a thing. Is that going on here? Absolutely, Dwayne, yes. There were lots of spots that you couldn't get to in, in larger boats, some prime fishing areas. I, I see uh, even in you know ads that come in the newspaper and so on ads for specifically anglers kayaks you know they have places to hold your rods and places to hold your tackle boxes and all that kind of stuff certainly um, both the, both the kind you climb into and the kind you, you sit on top yeah. and that, that ever that leads me to another question if I'm you know let's say I'm, I'm disabled I'm in a wheelchair or whatever and I, I would love to get out with everybody else and go kayaking would there be a certain kind that might suit me better to pick if I'm going to the store to pick one out if I if I have like I'm thinking of the sit on top type or the sit down in type, you know, or, or, yes. or one or the other maybe suits me better if I'm in that situation? 
That uh, I, I would we, think, we, uh, I we couldn't offer. We have to try that. We have to try that one out and yes, see. And, okay. Yes, yeah, this is something. That. This is something new. So that's yes. so that's that's exciting. Well, that's yes. that's great to have that that option on the. How far away? I mean, you know, how far down the horizon are we talking about to make all this happen? Well, it's a long-term process. We, uh, we in Summit Township have applied for a number of grants, and we recently received a, a DEP Northwest Commission Partnership grant for eighteen thousand dollars to commission a study. Uh, a, a feasibility study to, to see what w would be involved in making this project happen. Uh, we're required to raise additional matching funds of nine to $10,000, which we're actively trying to do. So that, that leads me to two questions here. So one, where are you? Are there fundraisers coming up people can help with A? And the second question is, how, how far in the future are we talking? You know, are, we, are we talking you know, five years away, a year or two away, or what do you think? Well, I, w I would think it's probably at least Two to three years away. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's uh, we have to. Uh, we have a lot of uh, processes Something to work through. Something good's worth waiting for, and, and yes, there's sir. a lot of steps that have to happen in the meantime. So yes. What about the fundraising? Are there are there ways folks can help? Yes. Uh, uh, people can go to our website www.clwta.org, and uh, they can learn more about us. Uh, they're welcome to join. We're always looking to expand our membership. There's no cost involved. We may ask you to volunteer. Uh, they can, uh, if they're interested in donating, the, their donations will be tax deductible. Okay. And we have a, a post office box 5034 at the, the Conneaut Lake Post Office, okay. Conneaut Lake Waterway Trails Association. Uh, there, we have a uh, crowd rise page, and people can get to that link on our website if they'd like to donate online. And uh, we also have a raffle, a, a Steeler Trip raffle oh, coming up. Very good. Uh, that uh, we're working on now. So, now I've been through a couple projects going through that registration to get you as a charitable, is, to get your to get your gifts as charitable donation. That's not that that is not an easy thing. That takes no, a sir. lot of time and effort, and, and uh, so good for you for for making it through that. There's a lot to, a lot of T's to cross and I's to dot there with that one. So good good for you on that one. We've had some generous donations from the local homeowners association, Lauderdale Estates Improvement Association, and uh, Crawford Heritage Foundation to, to provide funds for us to, to file our articles of incorporation and, and to apply for and receive our recognition of the exemption. So there has been quite a lot, but a lot to do, but we've had great help. So I don't have a time machine, but if I didn't, we jumped five years ahead, and it's all ready and it's all set. What's it going to look like? What's it going to be? Um, nice, nice plantings around, and nice places to park, and a picnic table. You know, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm just yes, thinking sir. in my mind about that kind of stuff. Yes, uh, Crawford Conservation has uh, really been helpful. They're, they've offered to to kind of walk us through this uh, as far as best building, uh, best practices, and uh, sustainable building methods. In the in the winter time, would that dock system that you mentioned would that have to come out so it wouldn't be damaged by ice? And That's something that the feasibility study will have to decide. Other marinas on the canal here put bubblers in to keep it from freezing. Yeah, around. so we okay. need our electrical service and some bubblers. But it's also possible that the the launch could be raised. Okay. So th those are okay. things that will have to be worked out by the engineers. So, did we miss anything? Are there other things folks need to know about this? You, you put your website out there, but maybe hit yes. that again and how they can how they can help. Okay. Well, like I said, we're always looking for new volunteers. There's no cost. We may ask you to to, to help. Uh, we want volunteers or, or members. Just uh, email us at uh, conneautlakewta at gmail .com, or they could contact us through our website www.clwta.org. And they can also contact us at our uh, at our uh, post office box. Well, also thanks to one of the owners here here in the Lauderdale area for letting us use their dock to, to get a good picture get a good picture of the spot we're talking about. So, yes, Dan, it's been a pleasure to meet you, and I hope we get the chance to talk about this some more. And we, we get out here for the ribbon cutting or the first crew. Uh, what do you call it? Christening, you know, the, of the first uh, launch happening or something like that. So keep keep us in mind for that one if you would. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Daryl. Very good.
Well, hello, I'm Lauren Little with uh, Meadville Medical Center and I'm here for your tip of the day. And uh, the tip for you is that we have a new program at the hospice, hospital that's been running for about uh, a few months now. It's called Pass It On. And it's for those people who maybe don't have insurance or the money to buy like a walker or a wheelchair. And so you can come to our office and we will supply that for you. The office is open Monday and Tuesday from eight to four. And on Wednesday from 8 to noon and our worker there is Bonnie and she'd be glad to help you out. Like we said we have walkers, wheelchairs, canes, uh, bedside commodes, overhead tables, uh, wheelchairs. So one way that we're able to supply those is people come and bring those things that maybe they've used in the past but don't have need of anymore. They bring them to us, we maintain them, we clean them, prepare them to go out to the community and then people come in, they sign a short form and uh, we log that they took that out and it's kind of like a lending library. We just ask that when you're done with it, you'd bring it back to us and we've had a great response from the community both with people bringing things in and also with those coming and using the resources that we have. And one thing that we're kind of a little short on right now is we don't have a lot of wheelchairs. Uh, we had a lot of people who needed those. And so if you happen to have a wheelchair at your home that's in good condition, uh, we really could use that. We're also getting a little short on the, the bedside commodes. Uh, we have lots of walkers, um, but we could always take more if, if you have some of those. Um, so we invite you either if you, you need those equipment or you would like to donate. Now our facility is in the Poplar Street building of Meadville Medical Center. It's on the main floor and it's in room 111. The phone number is 3 Three three seven zero three seven, and you can call that number anytime and leave a message, and we'll get back to you when Bonnie's in, and we'll be able to take care of it from there. Now, some of the things that we don't take because we don't have room for them are like lift chairs or a hospital bed. But what we do take care of is if you have those resources and you'd like to give them off to someone, then we'll take your name and phone number. When somebody comes in and requests those things, we'll give you a call, find out you know, how we can get together so that you can be able to get those resources or give those resources away. So we wanted to make sure you knew about that. And that's our help tip for today. EasyDoc's newest addition to the Easy Launch takes accessibility to another level by providing people of all abilities easy entry and exit for kayaks and canoes. The new Easy Launch accessible transfer system for kayaks and canoes provides unparalleled universal accessibility to the water. It's also simple and safe to use. It's so simple and safe to use that everyone will find boarding, launching, and recovery a breeze. The original Easy Launch for kayaks and canoes was the first of its kind, providing easy launching and recovery of kayaks and canoes. The guide rollers and pull rails make it easy to glide on and off the Easy Launch. Easy Launch is a floating system that adjusts to changing water levels. It provides ample foot space on both sides and in the front to allow for optimum access and stability. The new Easy Launch accessible transfer system has all the great features of the original Easy Launch. Plus, it incorporates a transfer bench and supporting rail system. The transfer bench has two height levels for transfer from different style wheelchairs and two transfer slide boards to accommodate different watercraft heights. The transfer slide board lands securely on the support railing system that stabilizes it and provides grab bar transfer assistance for easy slide movement and transfer in and out of a kayak or canoe. The Easy Launch Accessible Transfer System provides universal accessibility that exceeds the requirements of the ADA and offers innovative features, including transfer bench with two heights for easy transfer from a variety of wheelchair styles, two transfer slide boards, each at different heights for easy transfer into watercraft of different styles and heights, railing system for transfer slide board stabilization, user balance, and transfer support. The combination of pull rails and surface rollers provide easy access in and out of the water. Rollers for smooth transition. Floating platform adjusts to changing water levels. 
exceeds the minimum requirements of the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA. Simply put, Easy Launch provides a whole new level of inclusivity for all paddlers of all abilities. It provides unparalleled ease and safe access for all, along with their gear and vessels when launching and docking. For more information, please contact us. We look forward to helping you provide universal accessibility to people of all abilities. You can see the bridge on Route 618 that goes over to Conneaut Lake Park over there. Maybe this is a view that you don't get very often of Conneaut Lake, but um, thanks to the Lauderdale Estates, uh, the, the, the organization here that's, that's working on this project, and the, the WTA, the Waterways Trails Association, um, that's awesome, this, this project to help out folks to have an access to, to the water to get out there if you're disabled, that you can get out there on your canoe or kayak. Now again, it's a little ways down the road, but um, um, hey, there's a group that's working on that. That's, that's awesome. So thanks to Dan Thomas, the, the head of that group that's, that's working on this. Um, thanks to Lauren for our health tip today. Uh, remember, pass it on if you have equipment that uh, could help someone who's disabled that doesn't have a way to afford it, and it's cluttering up your, cluttering up your storage space. Get it out there, get it, get it in use. There's folks who need it. So, um, and especially thanks to you for joining us here on Medicine of Meadville, and we'll talk to you next time.